Hey again everyone and welcome to this next installment in the electronics tutorial series and we're looking at an introduction to diodes. Now diodes can be used for loads of different applications. Everything from power supply um, rectification, so converting AC to DC, um, to using LEDs as indicators, even extracting audio information from a modulated audio signal, um, even to power supply protection and ESD protection for chips. They're a very versatile component and um, very, very handy. Now, diodes are classed as semiconductors. That means that they can either be used as a really good insulator or they can be used as a really good conductor, depending on how we connect them up to our power supply. So, let's have a look at the internal makeup of a diode. So let's now look at the internal makeup of a diode. Now we start with a single block of semiconductor material. These days it's quite common that we use silicon. It's um, both very cheap and very readily available. So we start with a block of silicon. We then dope it with impurities to produce what's known as our, um, our PN junction. So one side is doped with such impurities to give us what's called the p-type and the other side is doped with impurities to give us n-type now with the p-type substrate or material it actually is doped with um, with an element or a compound I'm not sure what what you call it but um, it's doped with such a material so that we actually have a deficit of electrons so if we have a deficit of electrons, it actually leaves us with a whole heap of holes, which are positive ions. So we've got a whole heap of holes, whole heap of positive ions, so we call it p-type. The n-type is doped with such a material so as to give us excess electrons. If we have excess electrons, then we've got a whole heap of electrons in our n-type material. So we've got our p-type and our n-type. We call these majority carriers. So the majority carriers in the p-type are holes or positive ions. The majority carriers in n-type are the electrons. Now because it's not a perfect world we can't get all positive ions in this side and all electrons in this side. It's just not possible. We actually end up with a few holes over here or a few positive ions and we end up with a few electrons over here. Now I won't go into this in too much detail because you don't need to know it for now but these are called minority carriers. Minority carriers are actually going to give us leakage current when this should be acting as an insulator. So when we don't want any current to flow through here we actually will probably get some current flow due to these minority carriers. And we'll go through that a little bit later. But for now let's just focus on the majority carriers. So we manufactured this thing. We started with a block of silicon. We doped each half. We doped this side to give us p-type we dope this side to give us n-type. Now what actually happens from here is we get all these electrons or we get the free electrons and that means electrons that haven't actually formed a bond with um, sorry a covalent bond with any valence shell so these free electrons will actually be attracted over here and will want to fill in the holes so we'll get all these free electrons jumping across and they'll start to fill in holes over in the p-type like this. By them jumping across they actually create holes over here. Now it's only the free electrons that jump across not all these electrons are free because a lot of them will have had covalent bonds. So once all the free electrons have filled up over here, there's no more free electrons so they can't move anywhere. We've got all these holes here, 
we've got all these electrons here so we've actually created a high resistance region in here we call this the depletion region this reg region is very high resistance so right now this diode is acting as a very good insulator so no current will flow we actually if we want to get current to flow we need to overcome this depletion region we do that by applying a voltage which is greater than the barrier potential or I guess you could say the barrier voltage so in order to close this gap up and get current to flow we need to apply a voltage for silicon which is what this is made out of we need around about at least 0.7 volts or 700 millivolts once we apply 0.7 of a volt to this thing this depletion region will actually collapse or close up and we can get current to flow so now we're going to look at two different biasing techniques the first one is going to be forward bias and then we'll have a look at reverse bias if we want current to flow through our diode we're going to need to forward bias it that pretty much means that we just need to connect it to the battery or to the power supply um, with the positive to the positive negative to the negative so let's look at that just a little bit more here's our diode again there's our high resistance uh, depletion region in the middle we have our P and N type so a whole heap of holes over here whole heap of electrons over here now we have what's known as the anode and the cathode the cathode is like the negative terminal or the negative end the anode is like the positive we give the anode just the letter A and the cathode the letter K so if we were to forward bias this thing or connect it up so that we can get current to flow we need positive to go to the positive terminal or the anode to go to the positive terminal and the cathode to go to the negative or the negative to go to the negative now let's say we applied 0 0.7 volts here that is at least what we need to overcome this depletion region in order to get current to flow so if we have a look at this we've got negative connected over here we've got positive connected over here if this is filled with holes or positively charged ions and we've got a big positive potential over here then they're going to repel each other or well, the positive ions will repel this positive potential so they'll want to move this way with our electrons in here which are negative they're connected to negative again they'll repel now the effect that this has is that we actually collapse or we compress or we close our depletion region so this these two walls basically move in they completely close off and we've no longer got that high resistance depletion region and current will start to flow alright so we just went through how we can make a diode act as a good conductor of electricity which means it will allow current to flow now we'll have a look at how we can make it be a good insulator which means it prevents current flow or stops current flow I'll draw up the same diode here's our PN this is filled with holes or positive ions and this is filled with electrons which are negative reverse bias is just the opposite of this we now connect our positive or our anode to the opposite which is the 
negative. We connect our cathode to positive. So now we've got a positive potential here and a negative potential over here. The electrons from here will be attracted to the positive potential, so they'll want to go that way. The holes will be attracted to this negative potential, so they'll want to go that way. This has the effect of opening our depletion region. So remember, this is very high resistance in here. If we make it even larger, the resistance gets even larger. So we're now preventing current from flowing from making the resistance even greater. So this is how we can make our diode act as a very good insulator. Now before I leave you, I'll just um, go through a simple circuit application of one of these diodes. Now, we just saw that in the reverse bias, it would actually prevent current from flowing. So it would stop current flow. If we wanted to protect our circuit from, uh, for example, connecting our power supply or our battery in the reverse way around, we can actually just use a diode. So we might have, let's just pretend here, this is some um, delicate circuitry. So within this little box here is some very delicate surgery, circuitry, not surgery. Let's say we had the positive end and the negative end. So this is where we connect our power supply to, positive and negative. Now let's say that we came along with a battery and we wanted to connect our battery to this and we weren't sure of which way positive or negative was. And let's say that if we did get it wrong, so we connected positive to negative and negative to positive, then it could destroy our delicate circuitry. Well, in order to prevent this from happening, we can connect a diode to one of our terminals here. And this is a good time to tell you about the circuit symbol for the diode, which is this. This is your anode. This is your cathode. So it looks like an arrow with a line going through it. Now I think in the in the days when they actually came up with the circuit symbol that they had the arrow to show you the way of current flow. Now back in those days they they talk, they spoke about conventional current flow, but these days we talk, we tend to talk in um, electron flow or electron current flow. So the electrons, or our current, actually goes this way. So it's opposite to the way this arrow is pointing. So if we wanted to protect our circuit here, what we could do is connect a diode just like that. So if we were to come along and connect our battery up like this, So that would be the correct way around. We've got the positive and negative. So positive going to positive, negative to negative. Then that's the correct way around. We want the circuit to actually operate. So if we have a look back here, hopefully you can see that. We've got the positive going to the anode. Remember the anode is positive. And then through our circuitry, we've got our negative coming through, which is going to the cathode. So our negative would come through and connect to the cathode. We saw that we'd actually get current flow in this circuit if we connected positive to the anode and negative to the cathode. So we would get current flow. So this would start working. But if we came along or someone else came along and they weren't sure of how to connect up the power supply, and let's say they got it wrong. So they connected the positive to where the negative should go and the negative to where the positive should go. Well in this case we've got the negative going to the anode, we've got the positive coming through to the cathode. If we look back here, that's actually a reverse bias with the negative going to the positive or the negative going to the anode 
and the positive going to the cathode, it actually opens up our depletion region, which make, makes it an open circuit, very high resistance, and no current will flow. So this diode is actually protecting our circuit here by acting as an open circuit. So it would not allow any to current to flow in this, um, in this situation, which is really, really handy for you. In conclusion, diodes are semiconductor devices. This means they can either be a good conductor or a good insulator. Diodes are made by doping two halves of the semi semiconductor material with impurities to obtain P and N type material. Diodes will only allow current to flow in one direction and this is when it is connected in the forward bias. Stay tuned for more videos on diode circuit applications. You've been watching another Retro Brad video. Be sure to check out and subscribe to my channel for more electronic projects, hacks, how-to videos and tutorials. God bless.